So, you first thing to, to talk about the earthquake. Yeah, the earthquake in 89. Because I was talking to Dad about that where he was last week and uh, the other week. And I didn't get it on film. It'd be nice to get that recorded. Okay, on that particular day, your dad had flown down to Los Angeles to take care of some business. So he was out of town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at home mm -hmm. with all four of my children. And uh, I felt the rocking around, and uh, I was over by the wood burning stove, so yeah. I stepped into the doorway uh, into the playroom because it had a board across the top. Mm -hmm. I remember you, yeah, you just knelt down there. I remember that because the rest of us, I think, were just around the, the kitchen table, and we took cover under the kitchen table. And I remember, uh, while it was still shaking, I was thinking that you must know better than me, because you were sit, you you just stood where you were, and I figured you must know better than me. That must be safer than here under the table. So during the earthquake, I got up, ran across the room, and sat down next to you in the middle of the earthquake, uh, thinking that that would be the smarter thing to do. Which, looking back, it wasn't. <laughs> Um, well, you know, we had never had an earthquake practice in the house, mm -hmm. uh, but you had all been taught to duck under your desks at school, so that's why you knew enough, or should have gotten under the table, because you were in that room mm -hmm. with the we're, table. We were sitting at the table to begin Oh, were we? Or so you I, were? Most of us were. I think Michael was walking by, but oh. we all, we all gathered, gathered around underneath that old... An old dining room table, the one that had the, the leaf that we pulled Butterfly out, leaf. and then it, yeah, and then it folded out, and it, Butterfly and it was leaf. hard to do that because of all we had like so much, uh, <laughs> like I don't know, batter or something that eat through all those corners, and everything was all sticky down there. Oh really? Well, it was our dining dining room table, and you had a bunch of kids around it, so it it got messy. That table, we gave it to Ezra and Jamie when they went to Hawaii, or they had it before then, anyway. Uh, remember, she gave it away to the people who helped her move into her house, and they were really, really pleased and happy about it. Um, but back to the earthquake, we had done the wall behind, or David did all the work, behind the wood-burning stove, and uh, we had bricks. We covered the whole thing in bricks, but they were actually bricks that were like a um, quarter of an inch thick or half an inch thick. They were to be so used it's just as decorative. As a, just as a facade. Yes, they were decorative, but it looked like you had a brick wall. And because of the earthquake, all the, uh, the bricks, all of them had a little crack right down the middle of it. They didn't fall off the wall, but they, it they had that been paint. painted white, but you could see the little crack down the middle. Yeah, of the it, it basically cracked the paint. Yeah. And I remember seeing the crack. I didn't remember associating that having happened because of the earthquake. No, that's when it that happened. So, Dad, you were you were coming back from a flight from uh, uh, Los Angeles. From Los Angeles. And I was I was. Uh, Trying to decide whether to take that flight or the next flight. Uh, it, it's left every hour. Well, he had tickets for the next flight. That's where he thought he'd be back. But he finished his business early, so he had the opportunity to come back earlier. But uh, I came back early and. I drove through that underpass that was pancaked. The, the, the causeway that goes through... Uh, went through Oakland. Did you also go across the, the bridge that was... No. The, was it the Bay Bridge, I think? It was. Right. Okay. So not across that, but you did go through the causeway that goes through Oakland, that pancaked. Um... The Golden Gate Bridge didn't have the damage that the Bay Bridge had, so people who would normally commute 
back and forth across the Bay Bridge now had to take the Golden Gate Bridge. So, so you had already you you'd already driven down that that causeway, and you were so you were back at the yard at at uh, I guess it was Eight Ball at the time, not Remco. Right. So you were back at the yard at at Eight Ball. You were. Did you say you were outside or? I don't remember exactly. It seemed like I was outside. But I, I can I remember the telephone poles going which way and the Well you must have been outside to see the telephone poles swinging around. Or at least by the window or something. <laughs> but, okay. But, but I I remember I called the <clears throat> called the uh, house to see what assuming was all right. That was the last call I could make because they were the, the lines were so jammed. Everybody calling each other to see how they were. You managed to get that through to find out that we were safe at home. Yeah. But we pretty much figure he would have been on the road coming back from the airport, maybe even under that piece of freeway that fell down, if he had not taken the early flight. If he had taken the one that he had originally gotten his ticket for. Yes. He would have been on the cause, probably been on that causeway when it collapsed. So either ahead of him, behind him, or on top of him, one or the other. But we were just glad he was already back in the yard. I'm thinking, you know, a big earthquake like that back in that day and age, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot different because it's going to be harder to get information about it. I mean, like when we had. You know, our earthquake two weeks ago, and the those just north of Joseph's house. You know, I'm I'm able to go online, and you know, in in a few matter of minutes, I see exactly where the epicenter was, what the size was. You know, you know, same thing when I, I mean, that earthquake in in uh, Idaho last week. You know, it's the same thing. Go to the same site, and I can look it up. There it is. You know, so you get that information really quickly to know, you know, where was this centered? Where was it hit the hardest? You know, how big was it? How far can we expect it to be? You know, whereas that earthquake in 89, you know, you don't know how far reaching it is. And I, I didn't think of that kind of thing when I was a kid. I don't remember... Uh, Thinking, oh my goodness, is dad okay? Where was this? Who was hurt? And all of that. I didn't, I don't remember thinking of, of things along those lines because I was, let's see, this was 89, so I would have been seven years old, I, I guess. Maybe. You wouldn't have had your birthday yet. You were born yeah. in 81. Yeah, so I, I'd be seven years old at the time, so I'm not thinking of that kind of thing. Whereas that was a little bit more on my mind with this most recent earthquake, you know, I'm thinking, where was this centered at, you know? Like, I could tell it was a long one, so it must have been a big one, but where, who was hit? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm able to get that information. And I'm thinking, at that time in 89, I mean, you get news reports, sure, on TV, but, like, when did they know? When did they have information that says... This was a something point something, and this was over here and stuff. I mean, at the time, that's when they were doing the uh, World Series. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they, it, the game they were just getting ready to start it. And that's Had, what, hadn't actually started. Mm -hmm. That was in Oakland. That was uh, no, no, in San Francisco. San Francisco. Candlestick Park. And they. Uh, Reports say that if it wasn't for that, the death toll would have been a lot higher, because that causeway was 
largely empty, I guess, because of people going for that game. Because it was World Series between San Francisco and Oakland. So yeah, everybody in the area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, people don't talk too much about baseball anymore, but that was quite the thing. So it was, a lot of people were out of danger because of that. But Although I'm sure they felt it in the park, mm -hmm. and the game was canceled. So when, uh, do you recall when you found out that the causeway had collapsed? That it had pancaked like it did? I mean, when did you, do you recall when you found out that you very likely could have been killed if you hadn't taken that earlier flight? Like, was it that day? Was it the next day or that night or something? It would have been that day because I, I had, we had a TV. We could see the news. Mm -hmm. You had a TV at the yard? Yeah, down, down uh, in the... Not in the shop? In the shop. Oh. Yeah, that's true. You wouldn't have... It's a lot more common to find TVs in offices now. <laughs> well, yeah, or to see it pop up on the, your screen to your computer, mm -hmm. which is a TV. Well, it's also, TVs are cheaper, you know, you get these yeah. big flat screens and they're, they cost as, about as much as those, you know, much, a relatively smaller tube TV back in the day, so people just get them, and so there's like one in our office at uh, Accent and all over the place people get them. Yeah, so so you so you saw on a news report while you were still at the yard that uh, that causeway had collapsed. Did you have trouble getting home that day? Were the freeways still jammed, or no? I don't recall. Probably was at least a bit more packed than normal. I think that was when we had the black Cadillac still. You were driving it back and forth to work. I don't remember. Well, I don't remember either, but it was that's the picture that came up in my mind. I want to say you guys got that later. I don't know if we're sure. It's just I remember... It, we got it not long after we bought that house. Because I remember commenting we had to... We got rid of it... Well, we did have no, it for a while, you, didn't we? You didn't get it for a while till after yeah, you had the house, because I remember true. when you guys got the Cadillac. I remember yeah. we used to drive around in that Ford Taurus with the red interior. And I remember that one because to get all of us in there, you had to pop up these seats in the back that were facing the other way. Oh, yeah. I remember those seats, because they, they weren't very comfortable, and plus it just was really weird to me because I'm facing backwards. You know, and so I'm, so that all, that happened when I was old enough to be aware of it. You might have had the, the Cadillac by then. had that, but... um, when Ezra was dating Maria, because I remember using the phone in there. Oh, they had the Cadillac when you, yeah, I was like, yeah, you didn't have the Taurus then. No, no, we gave that to uh, Lester and his family. So, yeah, I don't know when you got the Cadillac. I can't really remember, but I do remember before you had it. I remember when you got it. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember how, where that was well, in relationship to I just remember that we got it because we needed a, a pickup because you can't haul hay in a Cadillac. Okay. So, just trying to think if there's any other stories we want to share. Since we were talking about that earthquake in 89, the other thing we, we didn't mention was um, Robert Bradford. He had to drive home using the Golden Gate Bridge now, and it was extremely stressful. It was a longer commute uh, coming up that way and coming up across that way, a longer commute, and certainly a much more crowded commute. Mm -hmm. And it was extremely stressful for him, and uh, his blood pressure went way up. So, 
I remember he went to the doctor and his blood pressure was high enough that they wouldn't let him go home until they brought it down. And, uh, well, you know, while you talk about the Redfords, we had, when we bought the house there on Solano Road, a, um, uh, it's not a water cooler, a swamp cooler. Swamp cooler. A swamp cooler. And after a few years, we put in air conditioning. And that was very nice, too. So we gave the swamp cooler to the Bradfords because it could get really hot in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we also had missionaries living in the trailer <laughs> back behind our barn. And uh, I remember this one. Yes. Yeah, so the missionaries were talking with the Bradfords well, about how... Well, they were having dinner with the Bradfords in there. The swamp cooler had been put in their dining room, so there was all this cool air right where they were eating dinner. And they were just enjoying it and commenting how nice it was and uh, said that we had, we, we had, they didn't get a swamp cooler back in their trailer because the childs had given their old swamp cooler to a poor family who needed it. <laughs> and... Uh, Turned out that poor family was the family that was feeding them dinner that night <laughs> as they were enjoying the swamp cooler. So I don't know if the Bradfords mentioned that we had given them the swamp cooler or how the missionaries got the message, but we've always considered it extremely m amusing that the, <laughs> the, 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 the poor family had the swamp cooler and they didn't get to put it in there in the trailer where they were living. I'd just be so embarrassed with that thinking you that what the, what an impression that must leave. Well, you know, we we didn't tell them who got it. You know, we just kind of left it up in the air and the poor family got it. <laughs> so the Bradfords were they were okay with it. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> Anytime you have eight children and one one salary to to take care of everybody, they knew how to to stretch it out and make the ends meet. That's for sure. Or nice to have as uh, some neighbors in our ward. Oh, they were wonderful people. They both passed away now, and mm. whenever like. I know Lee's birthday comes up. Her children always acknowledge her on Facebook, and and, uh, and everybody chimes in. Everybody loved Diana. She was wonderful, mm -hmm. she down was. to the earth. Nothing fake about her. Just loved everybody. Took care of everybody. She was my first counselor when. I was Relief Society president. I know he had a real gift besides just being able to make people comfortable and know that they were loved. She had a real gift for taking care of babies. And there was a woman in the ward who had a baby that she was unable to take care of. And so I took the baby over to Ina Lee. Now, Ina Lee didn't have any more babies of her own at that time. And so she didn't have um, a, a, like a bassinet or something to put the baby in. And I happened to be um, taking some things up. It happened to be that the uh, BI had a trailer in our stake center parking lot mm -hmm. for remember. people to go and put things in. And when I opened the door to put our stuff in, there was a uh, bassinet and a couple of other things that would be very needful for a new baby. And I looked at those things and we weren't supposed to take anything out of the trailer, but I used my right as a Relief Society president to confiscate them, take them over to Ina Lee since she was taking care of this new baby. And um, I, I'm sure that at a later time they got returned to DI, but <laughs> they they were needed at that time, and I really felt that as the president I had the right 
to take what was needed for our ward at that time. Just as much as I had the right to sign food orders and get them to the bishop and take care of people who needed food, well, this wasn't a food need, but this was an equipment need. Do you read, uh, have you told the story of, of putting the floor down? No, I don't know. I don't know if we have that one on camera. So we might as well. That was because that was a good story. We were redoing the house, making some major upgrade and changes to our house. Our house, right? And I always kind of felt guilty whenever we received an opportunity to have such a great blessing mm -hmm. in our life without sharing with other people who certainly could have used such a blessing in their life too. So we decided, <laughs> the Bradfords had in their kitchen, um, had been a water leak in front of the sink, and it might have been due to a portable dishwasher or whatever, but part of their floor was rotted out at that point. And we thought um, we would go over and put a new floor in for the Bradfords in their kitchen. Uh, kind of my way of getting rid of any guilt that I was feeling about what I was getting. So we decided that we would do it um, anonymously, and it would be while they weren't home. It was so fun, you know, to, to do things for the Bradfords. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. And they're always so appreciative. And um, so we decided that um, we would do this on a night when they were gone for an extended period of time. There was a dance festival over in Santa Rosa, and their girls were in it. And so they would be gone that evening with their family for several hours. And we decided this would be a good time to do that. And we had bought some peel and stick um, squares, for, yeah, squares of linoleum. But of course, first we had to take care, get all the old stuff off in order to put in the new stuff. That was a lot of work, and it took more work and more time than we anticipated. Had we known ahead of time, we would just put a subfloor directly on the old floor and gone from there, and we could have been in and out in a lot less time. Well, we made arrangements with the Padillas because they had a key to the Bradford's house. And we got the two missionaries. Who are the Padillas? Uh, K. Padilla. They had kids and a horse. They lived on up the street from the Bradford's. Okay. <clears throat> you probably don't remember them. Anyway, they had a key to the house. So they, they were Bradford's neighbors. Yeah, but they're across the street and up a few houses. Okay. And um, Oh, wait. Cape, I remember that they had like a, a white ho brick house with red trim. Yes, and she taught piano lessons. I don't remember that, but I remember well, I where they I remember there... Ezra took piano lessons, not very many of them, because he got home one day and he was all through taking piano lessons because he now had all ten fingers of his hands learned. <laughs> so he didn't need any more piano lessons because he had... Touched, learned all, all the fingers. I just remember... Or maybe it was only five fingers. <laughs> I, I just remember some lady that lived on the same... On Tolina, same street as the Radfords. R raised down a little horses. bit. That we had some connection to and we had spent time with uh, like a couple times. And I just remember the name Kay. Well, she and I used to trade off babysitting when the other one went visiting teaching. Okay, so she wasn't our work. Yes. Okay. Yes. See, I didn't. I didn't know that. Okay. So. Well, you're wasting battery. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, we got the two elders to come and help us strip the floor down, and like I say, it took a lot longer than we had anticipated. But we finally got it stripped down, and uh, the new tiles put out. But all of a sudden, it became at such a time that the Bradfords would be coming home, and we needed to clear out of the house. And so there was all this, we had piled things on their dining room table, and the missionary started grabbing stuff and running it out and putting it in the car. And um, 
we got out probably as they were still coming down the street. We were headed the opposite way out mm -hmm. of their driveway back to our house. And I, I just wanted so badly to be a fly on the wall and see the house. Finally, later said that the, uh, the floor was so new and shiny, it's like it just, you open the front door and, and it's like the light was coming in from the kitchen, just bouncing off from the new floor. And what a shock it was to come in and see your kitchen floor wasn't there anymore, but there was a different floor there. And uh, anyway, um, that morning, next morning, in, we just stood there at our window at our house, watching their house across the way. There mm -hmm. wasn't any obstruction at that time. And we could see their house and it just wanting so badly to know what their reaction was. Well, the next morning at church, um, Brother Bradford got up and was talking about how somebody had broken into, broken his, into house. his house. And, <laughs> And David was just sitting there trying to sink down to the floor <laughs> because he knew what had happened at his house. And he didn't seem very happy to have somebody break into his house. Well, that morning for church, and you're always in a hurry. you got four little kids. You're trying to get out the door. But I couldn't find my purse, but I, I didn't have time to look for it. So I went, uh, went to church without my purse. Well, I know Lee cornered me and asked me if I knew anything about her house. And then I played dumb. <laughs> no, what are you, what's the matter? What are you talking about? And she says, well, I think it was you because we found your purse at our house. <laughs> and uh, well, of course, by then you have to admit what happened. And she handed me my purse. And I know when the missionaries were grabbing everything and running it out and stuffing it in our car, they, as men, were not used to grabbing a purse to take out to the car. So they didn't think anything about grabbing a purse as they're grabbing everything off the table. And uh, so anyway, the Bradfords were appreciative and when we look back and we talk about events in our marriage, which has been going on 53 years, that's one of the big events. I'm usually the first one we mention when you talk about, oh, things do you remember from the past? That is usually number one on the list. That has been something that was very special to us. I remember he, he was always working on cars. Oh, yeah. And I, I'd come over and see how he's doing and everything, and uh, I had a, I had two battery chargers, so I gave one to him so that he could use it when he needed it. Keep recharging his battery. And uh, this time, I was there watching him, and. Uh, he didn't have a, a, a wrench to do what he needed on, on the car. So I ran, ran to the uh, store and bought a craftsman's tool set, you know, mm -hmm. with the wrenches he needed. And uh, I gave it to him, you know. Uh, I said, I don't need it. I got it already. So. I seem to recall you saying that he would mention some particular tool that he needed. He was asking if you had one. And you didn't, but you said you did. And then you'd go to the store and buy it. <laughs> and then hand that to him. Yeah, it was that way. So he was borrowing tools that from you that... Uh, you were actually just buying that he that he needed. I remember an incident once. I don't know if he had borrowed something that needed gas. Yeah. But oh. he he refilled when he brought a tool back, he refilled uh the 
little gas can that was out in the garage. Well, David kept that gas can filled with a different kind of gas. The mixed gas. It was mixed oil gas. and gasoline for mixed. the small motors. Yes, for small motors. So uh, when David went to use it, it was full, so he didn't think anything about it because at any rate... I went down to the yard and cranked it up. Was wasn't away with it when it went kiss. <laughs> It, it broke, and not repairably, so we had to throw out a chainsaw. But we never mentioned it to him because he was doing something nice for mm -hmm. us instead to refill the gas can. Kind of like how he never mentioned that he hated that new floor you got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a nice wooden floor, and now it's the peel and yeah. stick linoleum. <laughs> yeah, well, no, he had a nice linoleum that had terribly worn out right down through the subfloor ah. in the front of the sink. So you can turn that off now. I think you're done.